welcome to another episode of Untold Legends, where we explore the stories found within the world of video games, movies, comic books, and anything in between. Last time in the Mortal Kombat Timeline lore series, I covered the second half of the Deadly Alliance. The evil sorcerer, Quan Chi, including his origins as a Netherrealm demon, serving a fallen elder god, his manipulation of both Sub-Zero and Scorpion throughout their lives, all the way through his ultimate punishment delivered by Hanzo Hisashi. Today, I'll be covering Kano, the next character chosen by you, the community, in the last character poll. Although he seems to be hated by many in the fan base, resulting in the excellent comments like these. How do people even care about Kano anymore? This blows my mind. And ugh, Kano. I like to interpret that poll as saying 63% of people hate Kano. I love that comment. For me personally, he's one of my favorite villains in the series. I mean, how can you hate a guy that can literally shake Shao Kahn to death? <laughs> to be fair, you're supposed to hate Kano. He's the ultimate scumbag of the Mortal Kombat universe, a man willing to switch sides within a split second if it benefits him, a man so unapologetically selfish and conniving that he'll sacrifice his own people to escape the law. He's the definition of a bad dude. Before we really dive in, I'd like to introduce my Patreon. If you'd like to help support the channel and allow me to continue creating content like this for all the realms, you could become a patron for as little as $1 a month by clicking the link in the description below or head over to patreon.com forward slash gamerthumbtv. And I'd also like to thank my current patrons and channel members. You guys are awesome and are each invited to Kano's next cookout. Kano is involved in almost everything in some way, and he has a deep history. Even putting the video games aside, his early history was really weird, before he was solidly established as a true villain. It almost seemed as if nobody really knew what role his character would play in the overall story. And that's really represented well in the Malibu comics run of Raiden and Kano. Raiden sees the good inside of Kano and believes he can redeem himself and be a hero. Outworld had a previous ruler called Draxon, known as the Black Dragon. He he was slain by a man that happens to resemble Kano using a sword called the Ebon Rule that's powered by an evil man turning his back on evil. So Raiden believes that Kano can redeem himself by slaying Shao Kahn with it. So Kano goes along with the plan and ends up betraying Raiden in order for Shao Kahn to give him godlike powers. And then Kano has a DBZ style battle with Raiden in the sky and has a change of heart when he saves him by throwing him back into Earth Realm. It's all very bizarre, especially when compared to the Kano that Mortal Kombat fans know now. Regardless on how you feel about the movie, it's a fact that the original Mortal Kombat live action movie had a major effect on crafting the future storyline details of Mortal Kombat. But Kano is the best example on how much it influenced a specific character. Originally, Kano was designed as being a half-Japanese, half-American man orphaned at a young age and falling into a life of crime. But the late Trevor Goddard portrayed a very different Kano in the movie, with many aspects that permanently bled over into the character. First off, his accent. Everyone associates Kano with being Australian, something that is now an absolute absolute fact, but is actually a mistake. In the movie, Trevor Goddard portrayed Kano as a Cockney Englishman. Here's the definition for what that means. Cockney is a dialect of the English language traditionally spoken by working class Londoners. Now look at this. This little baby brings back memories now, doesn't it? He's supposed to be English. The accent was mistaken as being Australian by American audiences, and so Kano is now Australian. And actually, if I do have any Australian or English viewers out there, I would definitely love to hear your opinion on his accent. What does it sound like to you? And in the original game, one of Kano's special abilities was throwing a knife, but it never really looked like one to me. When I was a kid, I always thought it was some kind of little mini lightsaber or laser knife, because when you throw it, it has this blue light trail. But the movie gave him a more menacing raptor knife that looks like it could butcher someone violently. It even made it into the knife magazines at the time, on the front cover. And of course, Kano is now associated with sharp, dangerous blades. Yeah. 
Dana wins. Fatality. And lastly, we all know the in-game story of how Sonya Blade is after Kano because he killed her partner in the Special Forces, right? This little baby brings back memories now, doesn't it? What, you used it to knife your mother in the back? Nah. It put a big smile on your partner, though. Yeah. To ear. That was completely made up for the 1995 movie, with no in-game history at all to give Kano and Sonya a more personal connection, and it was retconned into the overall storyline in various ways, with very conflicting examples. That same year, the Mortal Kombat Blood and Thunder comic book was released, which depicted Sonya's partner Lance facing off against Kano in the original Mortal Kombat tournament, though he's seen nowhere in the game. After electrocuting Kano with his weird robotic stretching arm, Kano rips his heart out and kills him, sending Sonya into a frenzy. But in the animated series Defenders of the Realm, another depiction of Kano's murder of Sonya's partner is depicted off-screen. They never showed him, but in that version he was called Wexler. He died when he was with Sonya searching a hotel, and Sonya went down to get some coffee. I did not make that up. That's the reason he was alone. She wanted some coffee. Sonya went to go get it, and Kano planted a bomb in the hotel, blowing up Wexler and Sonya swore revenge. What happened to Wexler? Is he okay? I'm sorry. They just didn't get to him in time. Sonya knew who was responsible, and she vowed Kano would pay. And by the way, I absolutely love Kano's voice in the cartoon. He sounds like a stereotypical Saturday morning cartoon villain. You're sitting on a time bomb. You remember how much I like them. Don't you, baby? <laughs> no! Apart from the animated series, eventually Sonya's dead partner made the leap into the video game universe too, even being directly mentioned in Mortal Kombat 11 character interactions. Still got an answer for Sonya's partner. Best let sleeping dogs lie, mate. Not when the dog's rabid like you. Fatality. So basically, the original movie created the character of Kano as we know him today. Love him or hate him, Kano is in everything Mortal Kombat related and will likely continue being so. He had his own action figure with a little missile launching combat cycle, the awesomeness of 90s toys, and by the way, I find it extremely entertaining how the box says 5 and up for a game that was responsible for creating the mature rating system. He did have another live action representation in the Mortal Kombat Legacy web series, selling parts to the Lin Kuei for their cyber initiative program, and his eye was destroyed by Jax when he kept punching him over and over something coming directly from the video game universe resulting in his cybernetic eye. And Josh Lawson is going to be playing him in the newest incarnation of the character in the upcoming 2021 live-action reboot. Kano even made it as far as being depicted in a Disney animated movie in Wreck-It Ralph, where he rips the heart out of Cyril from House of the Dead. You must love you. Yeah, inside here! Yeah. Oh, whoa, okay. Oh, all right, I get you. I get you. Watch out, stripping. But how did the idea of Kano come up? Where did the creators of Mortal Kombat get their inspiration from? Kano was the final fighter to be added into the original game and was created to give Sonya something to do, essentially. He was developed as her rival and would have sported a helmet with two red eyes. Something that sounds kind of stupid, so I'm glad it was dropped in favor of a smaller piece of metal over his right eye, which was originally planned to be an eye patch. If he looks like the Terminator to you, that's no coincidence. Ed Boon and John Tobias, the creators of Mortal Kombat, were huge into pop culture, comics, movies. The metal portion of his face and glowing red eye were directly inspired by the Terminator. The mask was actually a simple costume piece created by cutting out a piece of plastic and painting it silver, something you can actually recreate at home really easily. Then it was attached with spirit gum, a common supply you can buy in any Halloween store. Then the red glowing eye was imposed digitally. Kano was played by Richard DiVizio, and he had a big part to play in the character's development. Kano had one of the more violent fatalities that politicians were horrified by in the 90s, the famed heart rip. Kano wins fatality. 
it was completely Richard DeVizio's own idea as a fan of Indiana Jones. He was inspired by the infamous heart-ripping scene in the Temple of Doom, and of course in the games it was later built upon and exaggerated, as Mortal Kombat does. <laughs> Kano wins. In game, Kano's early Mortal Kombat history has never really been elaborated on besides the fact that he's a high ranking member and leader of the Black Dragon Clan, a criminal syndicate made of cutthroat mercenaries involved in multiple forms of criminal activity. Originally, the Black Dragons were part of the Red Dragon Clan, founded by a man named Dagon, but some of its members grew discontent with the Red Dragon's strict code of stealth and honor. Eventually, they split off to create the dishonorable Black Dragon Clan. The Red Dragons and Black Dragons became rivals, and every Black Dragon member was marked for death by the Red Dragons. The Black Dragon criminal empire became so notorious around the world that the United States government formed a military group known as the Special Forces to deal with both clans. After the Special forces were established, Major Jackson Briggs tracked down Kano and confronted him in battle. Kano escaped with his life, but his eye was damaged beyond repair. It was removed and the Black Dragons installed a cybernetic implant that gave Kano the ability to see in several different vision modes like infrared and x-ray, and a deadly laser he can tune low enough to knock someone out or strong enough to go right through the human body. <laughs> Kano wins. Fatality. At some point before the original Mortal Kombat tournament, Kano was taken into custody and jailed by the Special Forces, something that will happen quite frequently, leading to the events of Mortal Kombat Special Forces. In prison, Kano and his Black Dragon crew, consisting of No Face, Tazia, Jarek, and Tremor, planned an escape and broke out of it. A Special Forces squad attempted to stop them, but the entire squad was annihilated, and Jack swore that Kano would pay for his crimes. Kano? You're gonna pay for this. Jax went after the Black Dragons on his own and confronted Kano's lieutenants one by one. Kano had released them under the idea that together they would reform the Black Dragon. In reality, Kano was using them to slow down the Special Forces so he could travel into the realm of Outworld and collect a powerful artifact for himself. The Eye of Chitian. The artifact was actually the crystallized eye of a mythical sorcerer from Outworld that held the power to create interdimensional portals to other worlds. And of course, Kano planned to take the crystal for himself and use it to dominate the world. Jax eventually defeated all of Kano's allies and followed his trail to Outworld in a final confrontation before he could take the eye. Well, well, well. If it isn't that pesky Special Forces grunt, come to seek revenge for all his troops. I am quite impressed. You have managed to defeat all of my Black Dragon members. Pity. They were all looking forward to restarting our little gang. Little did they know they were only pawns to slow you down. And in that respect, they succeeded. You're too late, Jax. I have already reached the Eye of Shi Tian, and soon you will know its power. And, <laughs> oh, delicious irony, you shall be the first to serve me. The only thing I'm going to serve you is a steel fist to your face, you delusional maniac. And after you get your pounding, I'm going to haul your butt back to prison back home on Earth, where you won't have the aid of this overgrown light bulb. Sorry to burst your bubble, Kano, but the only thing you're going to lord over is a porcelain throne and a 4x4 four four room.
I know exactly what I'm going to do with this thing. Kano was defeated and taken into custody, but his capture wouldn't last long. He broke out of prison again after he heard of the upcoming Mortal Kombat tournament taking place on Shang Tsung's island. Kano heard rumors that the island held riches beyond imagination and rushed to get on the boat leading there, with the goal of looting the island. Sonya Blade led a special forces team after Kano and she was determined to capture him since at some point prior, he killed her partner. But Kano fired back and caused an explosion, sending him flying onto the ship. When he boarded the ship, he was surprised to see Johnny Cage, an actor he'd seen in many action movies, and asked him for his autograph. But a man like Kano would surely start trouble with such a famous figure, and picked a fight with Johnny Cage, and Cage was forced to show off his moves to defend himself. Eventually, Shaolin monk Liu Kang stepped in and ended the fight. When they arrived on the island, the combatants were welcomed to the Mortal Kombat tournament, and Kano was free to participate, all while he was seeking ways to steal the treasures found there. <laughs> But Sonya Blade and her unit followed him to the island and were captured by Shang Tsung's minions. Shang Tsung offered her an ultimatum, participate in the tournament, or she along with her entire squad would be executed. During the tournament, Kano and Sonya fought each other, much to Shang Tsung's enjoyment. In his non-canon Mortal Kombat ending, Kano rose to the top and defeated Shang Tsung. After Shang Tsung's defeat, Kano and the Black Dragon Clan took over the tournament and influenced it with his own brand of treachery, to the point where the tournament brought shame to everyone involved, and was eventually dismantled. This all of course is before the Mortal Kombat tournaments were clarified to be protection against extra-dimensional threats. In the canon version of events, Liu Kang defeated Shang Tsung and became Grand Champion of Mortal Kombat, saving Earthrealm. The island held together by Shang Tsung's magic began crumbling and the combatants had to escape before it was too late. During their escape, Kano was forced to team up with the rest of Raiden's Earthrealm warriors against an out-of-control Goro. During the escape, Kano and Sonya fell through a portal, leading to Outworld, and found themselves trapped there with no way home. They were forced to work together to survive, and were captured by Shang Tsung, and the evil sorcerer used them in an attempt to lure Liu Kang and the others to Outworld for a second tournament, leading to the events of Mortal Kombat 2. Although Kano didn't participate in the second tournament, he watched the final battle, as Liu Kang challenged Shao Kahn. He was held in chains in the background. Liu Kang defeated Shao Kahn and Jax freed Sonya and arrested Kano. While they were crossing the portal back in Earthrealm after Liu Kang's victory with Kano as a prisoner, Kano broke free from his bonds. They were teleported back into Earthrealm and Kano was free in Outworld. He came across the weakened Shao Kahn and made it clear he wasn't specifically loyal to Earthrealm. Shao Kahn made plans to invade Earthrealm directly and in order to keep himself valuable, Kano offered his services as a weapons instructor for Shao Kahn. As a man with vast knowledge on Earthrealm's weaponry, he was most suited for the job, and joined Khan's extermination squads during the invasion, bringing us to the events of Ultimate Mortal Kombat 3 and Trilogy. Raiden chose a group of warriors from Earthrealm to defend against Shao Kahn's forces, and Sonya Blade was among them. In his non-canon Ultimate Mortal Kombat 3 and Trilogy ending, Kano turned against Shao Kahn, lured his army away on a false mission, then nuked them with a stolen weapon. He killed the remaining warriors, then Shao Kahn himself, revealing that his secret plan all along was to take over the souls that were powering Shao Kahn. But Kano was unable to control the spirits, and they attacked him. It was believed that Kano suffered a violent death because of his actions, but he unintentionally saved the world in the process. In the canon version of events, Kano didn't betray Shao Kahn. Sonya found Kano and challenged him in combat a battle that would end with Kano being tossed from the rooftop of a high building. With his defeat, most of the combatants believed that Kano was dead, but he was found severely injured by the centaur Mataro. Mataro healed him in order to punish him and imprisoned Kano for failing Shao Kahn. The Shokan Shiva snuck her way into Khan's palace and offered Kano a deal. She would free him if he helped her murder Shao Kahn, and she also agreed to pay him in precious jewels extracted from the mines of her home. Shiva discovered that Shao Kahn had betrayed her people and wanted the emperor to pay with his life 
life. When Mataro returned to the palace, Shiva attacked him and injured him severely, leaving Shao Kahn with no protection. But Kano was no fool. He knew he had no chance of striking a killing blow on Khan and warned the Emperor that Shiva had attacked Mataro and was coming after him next. Shiva planned to sneak into the throne room and kill Shao Kahn and waited for Kano's signal. But when Kano gave the signal, she entered the room and realized that Shao Kahn was ready for her and he attacked her relentlessly, killing her. With his actions, Kano gained the trust of Shao Kahn and was promoted to General of Outworld Armies, a position he wouldn't be able to enjoy for very long. Liu Kang challenged Shao Kahn to combat again and defeated him, sending the wounded Emperor back into Outworld, battered and broken. Khan went into hiding in his fortress and Kano was responsible for managing his remaining armies to defend Outworld. Kitana was leading an army of Edenians and Shokans against Shao Kahn, taking advantage of his weakened state, but Kano's leadership managed to repel the invading armies. When he returned to Shao Kahn to report on their latest victory, he saw Shang Tsung and Quan Chi preparing to attack him. From the shadows, Kano watched and allowed them to kill Shao Kahn, actually a clone of Shao Kahn unknown to them. After the battle, Kano presented himself and offered his services to the new rulers of Outworld, proving that he was a man that only had loyalty to himself. As Quan Chi and Shang Tsung worked together to resurrect the army of Onaga the Dragon King, Kano was responsible for overseeing the enslavement of a small Outworld village, forced to construct a temple where the Deadly Alliance continued their work. During its construction, Kano was assaulted by one of the village's residents, Li Mei, but Quan Chi intervened and saved Kano. But Quan Chi only saved Kano because he needed him alive. The Deadly Alliance made a deal with the Red Dragon Mavado. If Mavado eliminated the threat of the blind swordsman Kenshi, he'd be given the opportunity to face Kano, one of the Red Dragon Clan's most important targets. He attacked Kenshi, leaving him for dead, and earned his opportunity to face Kano. In his non-canon Deadly Lions ending, Kano stole Quan Chi's amulet and placed Onaga's army under his control. Kano and Sonya had fought before. Although Kano was humiliated by his defeat at her hands so many years ago, this time the outcome would be different. Kano had stolen Quan Chi's amulet at the request of Shang Tsung. With the amulet in his possession, Kano came to the realization that he was now in total control of the revived undefeatable army. Rather than hand the amulet and the army over to Shang Tsung, Kano kept them for himself and used the army to ambush Sonya, ending their long rivalry once and for all. In the canon version of events, he was beaten horribly by Mavado and taken prisoner by the Red Dragons. While Kano was captured, Quan Chi and Shang Tsung were defeated, along with the resurrected Dragon King Onaga. The half-god Taven was awakened from his slumber, a hero destined to challenge the Elemental Blaze to save all the realms from coming undone from constant combat and mortal combat. Whoever defeated Blaze would hold the power to change reality itself. Taven began his quest and eventually discovered a Red Dragon base where one of his family's Dragon Guardians Karo was being held. His DNA was being used by the Red Dragons to create human and dragon hybrids. The Red Dragons attacked Taven, and during the chaos, Kano was set free. Who are you? Kano tonight. I am Taven. Do you know what the Red Dragon are doing here? Seems they're trying to create real Red Dragons. They've been able to create a hybrid of man and lizard using their own clan members as test subjects. And you were next? They were trying something new on me, but they'll never finish. <laughs> Wait, I have more questions for you. After Kano escaped, he discovered that armies were gathering to claim the power of Blaze, and he joined Shinnok's forces of darkness in the final battle to claim the power. In his non-canon Armageddon ending, Kano was literally transformed into a black dragon. For months, the Red Dragon had kept Kano hidden in their mountain stronghold. An unwilling test subject for a new process designed to transform humans into dragons. Kano escaped, however, before they could finish. Infused with godlike energy from Blaze, the process was rejuvenated. Kano was transformed into a black dragon human hybrid. 
In the canon version of events, Kano attacks Stryker and Cabal before falling off the pyramid and ultimately being knocked away by Shao Kahn's Warhammer in the distance. Just like most of the combatants, Kano died during the struggle, his body somewhere on the battlefield, and Shao Kahn defeated Blaze. Shao Kahn held the ultimate power to craft the universe in his image, and Raiden sent his message back in time to alter history, reverting the timeline back to the original tournament in a new altered history. In this version of events, Kano's backstory remains similar, except for his history with the Special Forces. When the Special Forces were created, he pretended to be a whistleblower for Black Dragon operations. In reality, he was their leader, and was manipulated the special forces and leading their agents into ambushes. He still confronted Jax, still lost his eye, and killed Sonya's partner. Sonya Blade entered the tournament to find Kano, and Kano fought on Shang Tsung's side, betraying his home, Earthrealm, for power and riches. Sonya first encountered Kano after a tussle with Johnny Cage, left her tired out. I'll just leave you to your problems. Good idea. Huh. Yeah. <laughs> Now that he softened you up, it's my turn. Not man enough for a fair fight? I don't do fair. <laughs> SF is on the way. You won't get far. Oh, I got a knack for survival. You, on the other hand, are gonna die here. Yeah. What? Step away from the lady. Fans think my moves are all wire work and special effects. Truth is, I am the special effects. Johnny Cage wins. Throw that on your Barbie, shrimp. Thanks. No problem. While Sonya was distracted by Johnny, Kano escaped, and later joined Shang Tsung, when Sonya and Jax attempted to escape from the island, and Kano challenged Sonya to a tournament match in Mortal Kombat. No! <laughs> Damn you! You have a challenger, Kano! Ugh. Pretty boy ain't gonna save you this time. So wins. Kano is not your prisoner. At least help Jax. He needs a medic. <laughs> Sonya attempted to arrest Kano, but he was under the protection of Shang Tsung as one of his warriors. Ultimately, Shang Tsung was defeated by Liu Kang, and Earthrealm won the tournament. Kano decided it was a business opportunity after Shang Tsung proposed a second tournament in Outworld. He offered the technology of the Black Dragon Clan and began selling Shao Kahn's forces Earthrealm weapons, but they were discovered by the Lin Kuei warrior Smoke on a mission to discover what happened to the original Sub-Zero. Army toting these, no one in Outworld or Earth Realm could stand up to you. Well done. You may tell your fellow Black Dragon that I am very interested in your merchandise. Shang Tsung. I'll take care of him. No charge. One dead Lin Kuei in a tick. Witness. Stay down. I would have words with your associate. Smoke defeated Kano, and the Lin Kuei Sector attacked him, in an effort to take him back to be cyberized. Shang Tsung took the opportunity to teleport away with Kano and his weapons to safety. In his non-canon Mortal Kombat 9 ending, Kano turned against Shao Kahn, and used the profits from his weapon sales to upgrade his cybernetics, in another tip of the hat to his Terminator origins. K. 
Kano made a fortune selling arms to Shao Kahn and used the profits to upgrade his cybernetics. The added connectivity of his eye implant gave him unparalleled access to global communications. Using his mind, he navigated the databases of banks, law enforcement agencies, and other networks. But his activities left him vulnerable to hackers. Jax infiltrated Kano's mind and trapped his consciousness in the Special Forces mainframe. It wasn't long, however, until Kano managed to free himself. His consciousness spread like a virus throughout the Special Forces network of automated weaponry. Kano has become a one-man army. In the canon version of events, Liu Kang defeated Shao Kahn and injured him to the point of near death. After recovering, Shao Kahn invaded Earthrealm with his armies, carrying the weapons Kano sold them. During the invasion, an ex-Black Dragon member called Cabal, now a police SWAT officer making up for his crimes, was horribly injured by the Shokan Kentaro. Kano found his disfigured, burned body and took him to Outworld where Shang Tsung was able to partially heal him with dark magic, and Kano used his technology to ensure Cabal's survival. Oh. Easy there, mate. You've had a rough one. Kano? <laughs> In the flesh. I was... on fire. Burned to a crisp you were. Good thing I found you. I'm hideous. Shang Tsung's magic healed the rest of you, but your lungs... Yeah. Take it off. Can't. It's permanent. What? No mask, no breathing. I'm... a freak. Go on. Give him a whirl. I don't use those anymore. Yeah, you're all proper police now. The Black Dragon ain't the same without you, mate. You should come back. We're in the money on this war. You sold those monsters their firepower. Guilty as charged. This is your fault. Cabal was horrified at what Kano had done to his body and forced him to bring him before Shao Kahn. And Shao Kahn was in the process of transferring the soul energy inside Shang Tsung into Sindel. The Empress requires something of you. <laughs> See there. I'm thinking he's a bit much. I can take him. Cabal was no match for the Outworld forces and escaped back into Earthrealm, and Kano continued supporting Shao Kahn's army. Cyber Sub Zero found Kano and his allies capturing Earthrealm's soldiers and torturing them. <laughs> Finally! Come on! We gotta get him to the graveyard at St. Dominic's. On your feet, all of you! For what purpose? Don't care, really. So long as I get paid. He said on your feet. Come on, up here! Hey, what it? I will help you. Kano was frozen and didn't take part physically in the rest of the invasion, but he eventually fought and warned Noob Saibot that Sub-Zero had been freed from his programming. After many Earthrealm losses, Shao Kahn was defeated by Raiden and Earthrealm was free, leaving it open for Shinnok to invade with his demons. Years later, during the events of the Mortal Kombat X prequel comic book series, Sub-Zero was sent by Raiden to retrieve a Kamidogu, one of the many magical daggers used as keys to keep the Elder God of Death Shinnok imprisoned inside a dark dimension. Sub-Zero learned that one was being hidden inside a Red Dragon Temple and attacked it fiercely, demanding to know where the dagger was. The terrified Red Dragons complied, and Kano revealed that he'd been following Sub-Zero, and took the chance to steal the dagger. He grabbed Sub-Zero and cut his face with it, leaving a deep scar over his right eye. But the dagger was cursed, and Sub-Zero began losing control of himself. The possessed and strengthened Sub-Zero escaped Kano's clutches and froze his cybernetic implant then ripped it from his face violently, and Kano collapsed from his injury. 
Luckily, Kano survived the encounter and escaped. He later accepted another job provided by Aaron Black to kidnap the daughter of Johnny Cage and Sonya, Cassie Cage, and her friend, daughter of Jax, Jackie Briggs. Kano sent the altered timeline versions of Jarek and Tazia to capture the girls, and they attempted to escape through the portal. But it wasn't easy to escape the Black Dragon clan, and they were eventually captured. As Kano and his Black Dragons transported the girls to their destination, they tried to escape again, and Kano fired a low power blast at Cassie, knocking her down and threatening to dismember a leg next time. After his battle with Sub-Zero, he was able to repair and upgrade his eye implant and detected there was movement in the tree lines. Suddenly, two Black Dragon soldiers were decapitated, and the Red Dragon Mavado presented himself. His objective was to capture the girls and deliver them to the Outworld Warlord Rico, but Kano didn't bargain with Red Dragons. Kano threatened Mavado by firing an energy blast directly through the head of one of his soldiers, causing a fight to erupt between the Black Dragons and the Red Dragons. Mavado and Kano hated each other, and Kano taunted Mavado about Su Hao's earlier death at the hands of Hanzo Asashi and Kenshi. He swore that Mavado would be reunited with his fellow Red Dragon, but the Red Dragons outnumbered him greatly, and Kano knew it was too risky to continue the fight. Aaron Black had been carrying a portal stone, an ancient relic treasured by the Ashtek people. Kano took the stone and created a portal to escape, and told Aaron Black that he could have never been a Black Dragon, since he tried to save people instead of exploiting them. Kano escaped with a portal stone to safety. Meanwhile in Outworld, Kotal Kahn was fighting a civil war, trying to bring peace to Outworld. World, but Shokan forces fought against his rule, and Kano arrived to announce that he'd help him fight his war, for a price, as usual. He brought his crew with him to aid Kotal Kahn in battle, and Kano was allowed to fight alongside him against Kintaro and his forces. Kano ordered Tremor to bring the floor crumbling down under their feet to destabilize them, and Kano showed Kotal what an Earthrealm weapon could do. Devastation and precision in a single package. Kano called forth a tactical nuke to obliterate the Shokan army. Kotal was amazed by the sorcery he had just witnessed, and Kano explained that magic was unnecessary when the power of the Atom had been harnessed on Earthrealm. After the battle, Kano bargained with Kotal for his payment and requested gold, but Kotal refused to pay Kano. Kano had previously endangered Kotal's alliance with Earthrealm by kidnapping the girls, and Kano was enraged that Kotal was refusing payment and threatened to keep the portal stone for himself. Kotal furiously attacked him, as Kano had no right to his people's treasure, and beat him down to the ground. After that, Kano was taken to the dungeon and turned over to Sonya Blade and Earthrealm Special Forces. Again, Kano would escape the Special Forces and begin plotting to gain more riches by playing multiple sides. Before the events of the Mortal Kombat X video game, Kano was hired to steal Shinnok's amulet being held by Special Forces, a plan masterminded by Rain. Kano stole it successfully and sold it to Melina, who was fighting a war against Kotal Kahn to take back the throne of Outworld for herself. He delivered the amulet to Melina, and additionally, she agreed to pay Kano 100 million in gold if he eliminated Kotal Kahn. To get close to him, Kano met with Kotal under the guise of knowing Melina's location while she secretly planned an ambush. <laughs> Million. Melina's given me twice that to take you out. Kotal knew better than to trust Kano and was ready to defend himself against a potential attack. Kano would have been killed if it weren't for the Edenian working for Melina, Tanya. 
she attacked Kotal, and Kano escaped. Due to the war going on in Outworld at the time, refugees were going to Earthrealm seeking asylum. One of the refugees, Lee Mei, told Sonya Blade of an Earthrealmer that traveled with her. He had a red glowing eye, and Sonya immediately recognized him as Kano, and she ordered a sweep of the entire Special Forces camp. Kano knew there would be a price on his head for attempting to kill Kotal, and was desperately searching for a way back into Earthrealm. In his non-canon Mortal Kombat X ending, Kano successfully made it back to Earthrealm, and passed on his teachings to his son, who has never been mentioned again. No. No. Kano had always been a survivor, but even he would one day succumb to fate. His ideals of ruthless terror would die with him, unless he could pass on his methods to a new generation. Combat, weapons, high-tech sabotage, torture, all would be part of the curriculum. But before his students could learn his techniques, Kano would beat the weakness out of them. They would understand, or die trying. Kano's first pupil? His own son. Class was now in session. In the canon version of events, Sonya found Kano using technology to hide his identity and took him into custody. Are you lost? Hello, love. Been a while. Not long enough. This is General Blade. I need MPs to my location immediately. Oh, let's keep this between friends. A trade. Info for freedom. I don't negotiate with scumbags. Well then, if mother won't play nice, maybe daughter will. If you ever. Back off, and all's well. Piss me off, and Cassie's gonna meet Uncle Kano. I swear to God I'll kill you. All right, all right, get off me, Sonia. Ease up. You kill me. Never fight. Amulet! Move, move, move! Sonia, we need that info. Sonia, don't make this another thing you'll regret. Talk! Later on, the Elder God of Death, Shinnok, was resurrected and defeated by Cassie Cage, ending his threat. But during the events of Mortal Kombat 11, Shinnok's mother, Kronika, sought to reset the entire timeline under her control to craft a universe of her own making. While she worked to create a new replacement timeline, the time rift she created resurrected many warriors from many different timelines. One of those warriors was Kano. The present-day version escaped from Special Forces custody, and his past younger self appeared alongside Shao Kahn of the past. Kronika had chosen them from the timelines and promised them a place of power in her new era if they fought against Raiden's forces and protected her. Shao Kahn was horrified to find himself in a time where he was no longer ruler and attacked Kotal Kahn. Kano fought alongside Shao Kahn and kept Kung Lao at bay until Devora appeared and created an escape route for them. Kronika had also resurrected Sektor and the Cyberlin Kuei, but Hanzo, Asashi, and Sub-Zero worked together to destroy them, and Sektor's damaged body was taken to Kano to see if a repair was possible, and Kano found himself impressed with his older version. Can you restore him? There's some frame damage. Circuitry looks good. It looks like someone did a software wipe. Fixing that won't come cheap. Once he is repaired, can he be replicated? Hundreds of times. Thousands. That's a tall order. But anything's possible. With the right help. Serve Kronika, and she will provide. Take the deal. 
Trust me. Otherwise, who can you trust? You weren't kidding. It's like a mirror reflecting the past. How about that? Over 50 and still a ripper. <clears throat> There's still the matter of our fee. We get paid in the new era. Kronika will make sure the Black Dragon come out on top. Not only in the black market, in every market. Right then, let's get to business. Using his Black Dragon resources, the Kanos were able to upgrade Sector and make multiple replicas to fight for Kronika, an army they gathered to attack the Special Forces base, as the younger Kano tried to settle the score with the younger Sonya Blade. But Johnny Cage at this time was an experienced fighter that wouldn't be easy to defeat, and he found himself surprised when he realized he was facing a younger version of Kano. Go back to the 90s. <laughs> Who's next? <laughs> I'm next. Hollywood. Hmm. Oi. <laughs> Shit. As if throwback me wasn't bad enough. Oh, it gets bloody worse. Sonya and your little girl, they're gonna die. Right in front of your face. No one threatens my family. Sells a full on generation swap here. Don't think so. Between Ninja Mime and Lady Liberty, we've got all the leverage. We're leaving. The Kanos escaped with the past Johnny and Sonia, and they used Sector as a bomb to destroy the Special Forces base. The survivors of the attack were transported by Raiden and took refuge in Hanzo Asashi's Fire Garden, home of the Shirai Ryu. In his non-canon Mortal Kombat 11 ending, Kano made a deal with Kronika to inherit the power of time, and used it to craft his own perfect timeline, where his entertainment and debauchery would know no bounds. I'd cut a lot of deals, but none spiffier than this. I spared Kronika, and she gave up the hourglass. The power to shape time and history to my liking? Oh, 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 fuck yeah. I set it up so that everything came up aces. Every desire, every wish, every whim I ever had, done and done. But I realized pretty quick I'd suck the fun out of things. Without a fight, winning was worthless. Nah, the fun wasn't in the having. It was in the getting. So, I changed things up one more time. Now, what I want is always just out of reach. I gotta earn it. I score lots of wins, but not always. And when I do win, <laughs> something to say. In the canon version of events, he would have no such luck. Before his final fate, Kano took Johnny Cage and Sonya Blade to a Black Dragon fight club and forced her to fight Cabal from the past. During his days as a Black Dragon member, Kano became his own best friend as the two versions of himself enjoyed lying to create a good show. The older Kano fabricated a story and told Cabal that Sonya would be the one responsible for his future injuries. So Sonya's the skank who burns me? Ah, uh, she more than burns you, Cabal. She goes black ops on your ass. Shocks, knives, the bloody works. Patched you back together myself. Well, most of you. 
she's dead. Miss Law and Order really does that to him? Nah, but now he's motivated. Hope you're ready for some preemptive vengeance. Sonya was able to defeat Cabal in combat, and for the next show of the evening, Kano ordered that Johnny Cage be dragged in and force them to fight each other. But Sonya refused, and Johnny urged her to give them the show they asked for to save their lives. Fighting buys us time. Final way out. So, quit being a diva. Hit me! During the fight, Cassie Cage led a special forces team into the Black Dragon base and saved her future parents. Cassie was able to take down multiple Black Dragons during the assault, but Kano found a way to get out and armed himself with heavy weapons before Sonya Blade figured out how to finally end him. Where do you think you're going? <sighs> about this future love I'm alive but you're dead as a doornail worst thing is it's those netherrealm stiffs did you in should have been me let's have ourselves a do-over <laughs> This is a pickle. Mother... Can you break his neck faster than I can gut, pretty boy? Don't forget, it's two for one. He dies, so does your little girl. Thanks, Kano. For what? For reminding me of the rules. After Sonya killed Kano's past to younger self, his future self felt the effects and died with him, ending the history of Kano in the Mortal Kombat universe. Eventually, Liu Kang became a god, and a new universe would be crafted to tell future stories. Will Kano return in this new era, and if he does, will he still be the backstabbing criminal that always looks out for himself? <laughs> Since you made it to the end of this video, I assume you enjoyed it, so why don't you go ahead and smash that like button, subscribe, and ring the bell so you don't miss any new content. You can follow me on Facebook, Twitter, or Instagram, links in the description below. And if you'd like to support the channel, you can join my Patreon or become a channel member. This is Fabian, I love you guys, and I'll see you next time.